For today's video, we have tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Google Pixel 8. Be sure to stick around for the entire video to learn some tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Google Pixel 8. This particular model is a Google Pixel 8 Pro, but no matter which model you have, you're going to learn some great tips, tricks, and hidden features. Let's get started with some tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Google Pixel 8. So here are some things that we can set up. Get instant translations. Identify music around you. Set up always on display. Control info on lock screen. Prepare for an emergency. Change how text displays. Add another email account or review additional apps. So we'll go ahead and tap on a few of these and set them up and see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like to get instant translations. We'll go ahead and tap on that. With Live Translate, your phone is your personal translator. So other, trans other languages will translate to the one that's set below. So I speak English, it's currently set to translate to English, and now messaging and live caption translations only take place on device and they're never sent to Google. So I'll go ahead and hit got it and that will set up instant live translations. That way if someone's speaking to me in another language, I can go ahead and it'll already know that I want to convert it to English and then it will allow me to understand what they're saying. Next up is identify music around you. I think this is a really neat feature. When music is playing nearby, it'll automatically just display it on the lock screen. It never sends this audio to Google, but it allows us to review what you know audio is being played, what music is being played, and then you can find previous songs and the now playing history. So I think this is a really cool feature. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button in the lower right that says turn it on. And now anytime I am in public or um, if I'm you know in um, an environment where music is being played and I wanna know what song is being played, all I have to do is just look at my phone on the lock screen and it will automatically identify what song is being played and just show it on the screen. I can set up the always on display. This makes it where the display is always on and you have notification time and other information appearing on the lock screen. So this is really neat. We'll demo this really quick. If I lock the screen right now, it just goes black and there's no always on display, you can't see anything, but if we unlock the phone, I can go ahead and turn on always on display. It's now turned on as we have this little check mark right here. And now when I lock the phone, the display here, it's not always on, it should turn on, but we'll take a look at that in the settings and review later in the video. So I'll go ahead and unlock one more time and we'll type in our passcode. Enter PIN to install updates later. So I'll type in my passcode, it'll verify that. Um, but the always on display allows it to provide more information on the screen um, when, you lock your, when you lock your phone. So we can see this example right here on the screen, the image that it provides when you lock it, the time remains on. And when you unlock it, the time pops right back up. So that's a really cool feature. Um, and we'll take a look at what that looks like after we complete the setup process. Control info on the lock screen. So we can say show all notifications content, show sensitive content only when unlocked or don't show notifications at all. I'm gonna move this to show sensitive content only when unlocked. That way um, it's more uh, privacy first when that means if I get a notification, no one can read it unless I unlock the phone. And of course, if I lose my phone, all my notifications won't just be showing all my information out. So I'm gonna select that option there and we'll hit done. Prepare for an emergency. You can sign in and get personal, um, you know, personal safety app here, and it helps you prepare and react to an emergency. So this is a neat option here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue as Justin, and it'll process here and allow us to prepare for an emergency just like that. So it helps prepare and react to an emergency by quickly connecting you with help and information you need. So that was a simple process there. We'll go ahead and hit continue. We'll confirm our settings. So our emergency number to call is 911 in the United States. And um, it's letting us know here that we can tap our lock button five times and, and do it quickly in order to call 911 in instantly. So you just tap this five times to confirm those emergency settings. We'll go ahead and hit next. Choose how to start emergency SOS. So there are a few options. We can use touch and hold to start. Touch and hold the center circle for three seconds um, in emergency action. So if we switch to that, um, it'll be a different um, reaction there. So we'll touch and hold after we hit the lock button for five times. 
or we can start actions af immediately after a countdown. So this way you won't have to touch and hold the center button after you hit the lock button five times and it will just start hitting emergency things immediately. Next up is play a sound. Play a sound, a loud sound during emergency SOS. Um, you can turn this on or you can turn it off. The only downside to having this on is if you're in a situation where you need to be quiet, you don't want a sound playing. So no matter which option you pick here, you'll definitely hit the button five times to activate the SOS feature. This option that you select here just determines how it calls 911, whether you want to touch and hold the screen or whether you want it to automatically call after it counts down. So we'll keep it on the countdown option and then we'll keep the alarm off and then we'll go ahead and hit next. There's more in the personal safety app so we can check that out to review emergency contacts, set up car crash detection and more. So cool features that they've got baked right into the Pixel phone and we'll go ahead and hit done for that. Next up, we can change how text is displayed. So we can check out the font size and it gives us a little preview as we increase the font size, what that looks like on our phone. We'll go ahead and keep it at its normal option right here. You can, dis you can change the display size. You can make it bigger or smaller, just like this. We'll keep it at the normal option. You can turn on bold text to see things more clearly, or you can have high contrast text right here where it changes the color in the background. Um, and allows it for a high contrast setting. So you've got multiple options here for the display size and text right here on your phone that you can check out right through setup. So we'll go ahead and hit the done button to lock in those changes. The last few changes they have here revolve around Gmail and apps. If you wanna add another Gmail account, you can do that, or it can be another email, Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, Exchange, Office 365, or other. You can go ahead and add another account here just by tapping on it and then it'll check the info and allow us to log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few of my other Google accounts and have all of them in one place, and I'll be right back. You can download Tamu using the link in the description and get up to $100 of coupons for free and 50% off. All you have to do is just click the link in the description and get access to all of that. So I've successfully added multiple email accounts right here on my Google Pixel just by selecting the add another email account and then signing in with my credentials on that service. So it makes it really easy to get started there. And of course, if you don't want to, you can hit this back button right here to go back to the main page right here. So we've got one more option here. We can review additional apps. So apps can be downloaded over Wi-Fi. We can review all of the additional applications that we can install right here. So let's take a look at them. Right now they're all checked. All of the following apps like Fitbit. Fitbit allows you to, to track your steps and your health. Google Docs allows you to write Word documents. Google Home allows you to control your smart home and use um, you know, all the Google products within your home. Google Notes, you can make notes and lists. Google News with daily headlines. Google One, which is kind of like their main subscription plan for everything Google. And then Google Wallet for payment. So we'll go ahead, we'll hit OK and ask it to install all of these different apps. Um, and now we've reviewed those and we've checked off everything on this list to set up our phone completely right here on the Google Pixel. We'll go ahead and hit Next. And it wants us to stay up to date with Google devices and services so we can have the latest features on Google Assistant and special offers. And go ahead and say, yes, I'm in to get all those details there. And it's getting our phone ready. So this may take a few minutes. We can learn how to navigate on the phone, learn the gestures to go home, go back and switch apps. So we'll go ahead and try it. You can see the little previews right here, but we'll click try. You can swipe up from the bottom of your screen to go home. So just like this, it allows us to go home. You swipe up from the very bottom. To go back, you swipe from the left or right edge to the middle of the screen. So you can start from the left edge or the right edge and you just swipe to the middle of the screen to go back. So if you're in, a, in an app and you want to go to the previous screen, all you have to do is just swipe from the edge or the left edge or the right edge to the middle of the screen. Next up is swipe from the bottom of your screen and hold to release in order to um, check out all your various different apps and switch. So you just swipe to the middle of the screen, you hold and then you release and now you can check out all the different apps. And we're set up, so well done. That's how you navigate on your Google Pixel. We'll go ahead and hit done. And we're all set, you're ready to go and start using your device. We can go ahead and swipe up to go home. It's giving us a nice vibration as this animation bounces down and it looks great. So let's go ahead and swipe up and we're presented. Welcome to your new Pixel.
So let's try out those new navigation tools on, on our new Google Pixel. If we wanna check out all of our apps, all we have to do is just swipe up and hold and no recent apps have been opened. So they're not there. If we wanna open an app, we can open up Chrome, the web browser, we can go ahead and continue. We can turn on sync, contacts Google, and then we can go ahead and continue, allow them to send notifications and more. So next up, if we wanna see all of our different apps, we can swipe up. And now, since we've opened the Chrome app, the Chrome app is there, and we can switch between all the different apps that we have open. We can swipe up to go home. We can open up the YouTube app, just like this. We can allow YouTube to send us notifications. Since there's a problem signing us in, we can go ahead and select the channel here. And now when we swipe up and go to the center here, we've got multiple apps open. So the Chrome app and the YouTube app open at the same time. We can swipe all the way to the left and clear them just like that. If we want to go back with an app, so we can open something like Messages and hit Next, Next, and start a new chat. But say we want to go back to the previous screen, we can just swipe to the middle of the screen, it goes back to the previous screen just like that. If we're in a web browser and we take a look at some um, options here, we open up a, um, a web page and we click on a link and we want to go back to the previous page, all you have to do is just swipe from the edge of the screen just like that and it goes back to the previous page. Swipe from the edge of the screen and it goes back to the previous page. Swipe from the, the previous screen and it goes back. So the back button is just a swipe from the edge. If you are in an app like the camera, and we can say while using the app, it can use location. If you want to, we can check out the turn on by default. So it saves location by default and the top shot. We'll go ahead and hit done. If we want to go back to the home screen, we just swipe up just like that. We can tap on the camera one more time. They've got camera shortcuts. You can quickly press the power button and take a photo. So you just press it twice and it automatically opens the camera. So let's try that out. If we are on any screen and we press the power button twice, it opens the camera and then we can press the power button one more time. Oh, and it did not take a photo, uh, but we can press the shutter button right here to take a photo. So that's how we quickly access the camera. And we can take a look at our overall navigation one more time. You swipe up to go to the home screen. You swipe from the edge of the screen to go back. And then you swipe and hold to see all of your different apps that you've previously opened, just like that. So really cool. Now you may be wondering what I just did there. So if you swipe from the bottom, but not the edge, you wanna, you wanna start right around here where the search bar is and you scroll up, you can see all of the apps installed on your phone. So if you swipe from the very bottom, it takes you to the app switcher where you see all of your different apps. But if you swipe from the mid section here or the lower section, you can go there and see all of your apps with the swipe up just like that. So really cool that you can check out all of your apps just by swiping up from where the search bar is. You've got suggestions on the bottom row. We can easily change these suggestions and access our most used apps. I'll go ahead and hit no thank you for now. Um, and that's the preview there. So we've got access to our Google Pixel. We've got all the latest gestures um, nailed down and we've successfully set up our phone from start to finish. The very first thing you should do when you get your brand new phone is update it and make sure it's on the latest software and make sure all of your applications are up to date. In order to do that on the Pixel, you can swipe down from the top and you can swipe down some more and you get this little gear icon at the very bottom to go into your settings. And here in your settings, you can scroll down all the way to system, click on the system button, and then you can scroll down to system update. And you can see that we're updated to Android version 14 and we're on the latest update. And we can see the Android security update is at October 5th, 2023. So you'll wanna make sure when you get your device that you're up to date and on the latest software, you can always press this blue button right here, check for update, and if there's an update available, it will pop up and you'll be able to install the latest update and be ready to go on your brand new Pixel device. 
Next up, you can check the applications on your phone and update those. You can do that by heading to the Play Store. And the Play Store is right here on the home screen. You can tap on the Play Store, open it up, and then tap your, your logo, or your name, your icon, your picture in the top right in order to get access to the apps and update them. So once you tap on that, you'll click Manage Apps and Device. And then you'll see here that there are updates available. So there are a ton of updates. I can see that there are 48 updates pending. I can click see all or just click update all. But let's check out all the applications. I'm going to press see all and I can see all of the pending downloads. And it's important to update your pixel to the latest software and also update all of your applications to the latest software so you can get the latest features. If there's an app that you want to use right away, then you can press the update button on that immediately and get that started. Otherwise, you can hit the update all button and it will go through these one by one and start updating them. So the update button is at the very top where it says update all. You just press that and it starts to update all of your applications just like this. That way, when you open them up, you're using the latest version and you can use them and have all of the latest features. So I really love this feature where you can update all of your applications at once and it starts to update and download all of them just like this seamlessly onto your brand new Pixel device. Next up, I want to show you a really cool feature in the Photos library that uses AI. So I have a video that I recorded and it has some background noise with cars in the background. So I can turn this up here. The audio using the audio magic erase uses AI. So you can hear in the background there, there's some noise. It's, you know, a static noise of cars driving on the road and the highway, and then me talking. Inside of the Photos app, after you update it, there's a brand new feature that allows you to remove the background noise using artificial intelligence. And all you have to do is just hit the edit button on a video that you've taken on your Pixel, and you hit the edit button just like this, and it pops up a brand new menu here where you can scroll over to the audio section. And this feature is called the audio eraser and it reduces distracting sounds. So if I play this video. Hello at Fine, we have a video here with some car background noise and we're gonna remove the audio using the audio magic eraser. So you can hear the background noise there. I'm gonna press this magic audio eraser button. It's gonna reduce distracting sounds like winds or crowds. It automatically adjusts the audio levels and it's really neat because it uses AI to take away that background noise and then all you hear is, you know, you know what's closest to the microphone. So you, we'll go ahead and hit okay. And it starts to work its magic here and we can go ahead and um, use the, the auto feature Hit play. Our background noise and we're going to remove the audio using the audio magic eraser. So now you can hear that it's not, um, you know, there's no car noise in the background. There's no sound in the background. It's clearly just my voice. We have a video here with some car background noise and we're going to remove the audio using the audio magic eraser. And that's a really cool AI accomplishment there. If we turn this off with the noise, uh, we can go back and reset these to zero turn on extreme oh I've got 10% we'll go ahead and hit no thanks for that so if we reset these to zero and hit play you'll hear the audio background noise again hello at fine we have a video here with some car background noise and we're going to remove the audio using the audio magic eraser and then use this AI to remove all the background noise in this clip really cool right Hello at Fine, we have a video here with some car background noise and we're going to remove the audio using the audio magic eraser and then use this AI to remove all So you can see when I adjust the dials here for the noise and wind, when they're at zero, you can hear the wind and you can hear the car background noise. But then when I dial them up and um, remove some of that, you'll hear that it's just my voice. So I think this is a really neat feature that you should try as soon as you get your Pixel. It's a really fun thing. You can open up a video and use the Audio Magic Eraser to remove background noise. You just hit the Done button after you've got your settings perfectly, and then you hit Save a Copy, and it automatically saves a copy of this video with the background noise removed because you can go there and modify things like the speech, noise, and wind, and make it a- Hello at Fine, we have a video here with some car background noise and we're going to remove the audio using the audio magic eraser and then use this AI to remove all the background noise in this clip. Really cool.
definitely really cool. So you should definitely check it out on your Pixel. The best thing about the Google Pixel is its AI capability, especially with editing photos and videos. If we go into our photos library, we can see some photos that we've taken. I want to pull up this photo right here. You can see that there is a lot of stuff in the background. I can use AI and Google's magic eraser exclusively available on the Google Pixel to remove all of this stuff in the background. All you have to do is just hit the edit button right here and some options come up. We can scroll over to tools and then we can select the magic eraser and it loads up right here and then I can just select the stuff in the background right here and let the magic eraser remove it just like that. We can select the stuff on this edge in the background just like that and have the magic eraser remove it. It left a little bit right there. We can just select that and have it remove that too. So just by selecting things in the image, it's using AI and removes them from the background using the magic eraser. So I think this is a really cool feature inside the Google Pixel that you've got to check out, especially when you get your phone and you start to take photos. If you want to remove people from the background, if someone walks in your photo frame, or if you have stuff in the background that you want to remove, you can do that easily right here. You just press the done button on the magic eraser setup and you have a brand new photo uh, with that stuff removed. So I think this is a really neat feature and the Google Pixel is all about using AI, artificial intelligence, to make this process even better and easier and more efficient. So you can check out AI. Another cool feature that I love with the I'm Google Pixel is that you can edit in, Pixel and we'll go ahead and pause this AI. video so we're not talking twice. But you can also edit video and they've got different AI features here too. Um, one of my favorite features here in the brand new software is to be able to remove the background noise using the audio magic eraser. So that's something you can definitely check out in the settings here on your Google Pixel. Um, your Google Pixel has an incredible AI software that uses technology and makes it easier for us to, you know, edit our photos or our videos right here inside of the app. So highly recommend checking that out. Another cool feature you have to check out with your Pixel is the built-in VPN provided by Google One. So you can swipe up and you can search or you can find the Google One application and open it up and log in with your personal Google account. And you can scroll down and they have this brand new option right here, the Google VPN. You can go ahead and click on it and the VPN protects your Pixel. And it's provided by Google One. You gain an extra layer of privacy and security and you can go ahead and manage that VPN right here. So increased online privacy with VPN by Google One. We're going to go ahead and scroll down. You can see that you get all this information right here to verify. You can allow VPN control. You can swipe the access on your mobile network. It allows for notifications and extra online privacy to stay private and you're always in control. So we can go ahead and hit use VPN and it just starts to connect there. VPN is connecting. We're currently on a Wi-Fi network and the VPN has successfully been connected. So really cool, I can scroll down here and I can see um, all the options that I can use the VPN for. The stream, download, browse content with a secure private connection. Keep your network traffic private from internet providers and hackers. Reduce online tracking by masking your original IP address. So you can pause and resume it right here in the app. I can press that pause button or I can resume it if it was paused. And then I can come down and see that it cannot access my network traffic um, so Google's VPN service cannot associate your network traffic with your account or identity. So those are separate. It doesn't send your information to Google um, for them to have access to. So definitely got to check out the VPN protection for your Pixel exclusively right here with Google One. A really cool feature that's baked right into the Google VPN software right here on your phone. And you can manage it and check it out just like this on your Pixel. So we see it's currently on, we can swipe it off or we can turn it off just like that. But definitely one cool feature you have to check out on your Pixel. To see the best AI tools and apps, go to appfind.ai for a full list of hundreds of tools. Also, subscribe to our weekly newsletter using the link in the description at appfind.ai slash newsletter to get a weekly email update of the best AI tools in your inbox. And make sure to sign up for other recommended newsletters as well. That way, you can always stay up to date with the latest AI tools in tech. This has been a complete beginner's guide of the Google Pixel. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, 
did, be sure to press the like button and let us know what your favorite feature of the Google Pixel is in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, be sure to turn on the notification bell and subscribe to figure out when we come out with our next videos. We love producing these technology videos for you and we can't wait to see you in the next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.